Good morning and welcome here to the Golf Ticket presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 match. And it's a match between Northern's Good Cricket Club, sponsored by Taj 777. They're up against Millington Cricket Club, sponsored by Laws Exchange. As you look at the bottom of that screen there, this is match number 23 that was scheduled for Monday, which got rained out. And now we are able to play this game today in absolutely gorgeous weather here. No clouds in sight. Blue skies ahead and absolutely magnificent conditions out there. And these teams will be looking forward to try and get something out of it. And it is the, the two at the bottom. Northern's Goodwood Cricket Club. They would want to finish off on a high and get some points on. They might not get to seventh, but at least they'll try and get a point on the board there, as you see. And Mulleton Cricket Club, they would just want to maybe even try and push to get into the top six for sure. But Rondebosch, Durbanville, they are the two teams right on top. Victoria Cricket Club, Belleville, they are the other two teams and make of the playoffs. So it's going to be Rondebosch playing Durbanville in Qualifier 1 on tomorrow morning. And then it will be Victoria and Belleville taking each other on in the Qualifier after that. So a lot of good cricket to look forward to. Who are the teams that's going to go ahead? The loser of the rondebosch Durbanville game will have another chance of playing on Saturday in the qualifier too to try and get to that final. And they will be up against the winner of either Victoria Cricket Club and Belleville Cricket Club. So we had the pitch report and the toss early on. So let's see what the outcomes of those things were today. Good morning and welcome here to Golf Ticket Presents, the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10. We're busy with match 23. This is the game that got rained out the other day. Unfortunately, that day was rained out. But today, what glorious conditions we're having here in Durbanville. Sun is out, not a cloud in sight. And again, let's focus on the pitch conditions here. The pitch is still as good as ever. Very hard. Not that soft today. So I still think that this pitch is going to be a very, very good cricketing wicket. Spinners again might just come into play here because I think now with the wear and tear on these wickets, they might find a little bit of turn. The match today between Tiger Northern's Goodwood Cricket Club sponsored by Tower 777. They're up against Bulletin Cricket Club sponsored by Lords Exchange. They're, both these teams have got nothing to play for, but there's still a lot at stake for Northern's Goodwood. They want to get a win on the board, so hopefully they can get that today. We're going to go over to the toss and see what the result of that was. And here we are at this toss here between this match between Northern's Goodwood Cricket Club sponsored by Tower 777. It's going to be Ambrose who's going to be captain. they up against Keegan Fortune's Millington Cricket Club sponsored by Lord's Exchange. It's going to be Ambrose to toss the coin. And it's going to be Keegan to call. Call us Tails. Tails it is. So... Keegan, what are you going to do today? Uh, we're going to have a bat. Yeah, no, no surprises for me there. Something that you haven't done before in this tournament. Maybe something in you and maybe you can try and finish this tournament off on a high. Yeah, exactly. Just uh, give the boys, the batters, some license. Let them go out there and just play their shots and express um, their talent. Things haven't quite gone your way in this tournament, but you've got a chance here just to really showcase what you, what you guys are capable of. Yeah, we've got a few younger guys in the team today, so hopefully they can come out um, and just have a good game and maybe uh, put their hands up going for the next season going forward. Your overall assessment of this T10 competition so far? Um, it's been a really enjoyable competition. It would have been nice if we won a mm. few more games, but I've really enjoyed it. All the games um, that we've played in have been very competitive, and yeah, we've enjoyed it quite a lot. Take a lot of learnings going into the new season. Yeah, definitely. We've tried some different combinations, guys bowling with the new ball in the power play, some bowling at the death, and it's something we'll definitely take uh, come September when the season comes around. Listen, go well today. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Ambrose? I don't want to say I called that at the start, but unfortunately you lost the toss, you guys in the field. Um, what's your take on that, firstly? Um, look, we're not too bothered what's going to happen. Um, we're still going to do both at the best of our abilities today. Listen, again, it didn't go well for your team, but this is a chance for you guys to get some points on the board and, and walk away with at least something. Yes, that's the old goal today. I've spoken to the guys at least just this one game. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you guys have chopped and changed. You've got a fair blend of youth and experience as well. I'm sure the youth will take a lot going forward from this competition. Yes, they're enjoying it a lot. I'm actually surprised about they're still keeping their heads up. Um, most of our youngsters are playing today, so I'm very happy that they're still sticking with us, although we're not doing well in the tournament. Listen, go well today and all the best. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks. So that's the news here from... The toss where Milton Creek Club, they have won the toss and they've elected 
to bat first. And that was the outcome from the toss earlier between the two captains. As we see this match, Milton Cricket Club versus Northern Scooter Cricket Club. And with me, as always, is the big Nathan. Big Nathan. Final group match, final league match, so to speak, between these two teams. Maybe a lot more at stake for Northern's good at Cricket Club because they want to get a couple of points on the board. Yes, uh, good day, Eugene and everyone else. Good day here in Dermville Cricket Club in Cape Town. There we see the two team sheets. There on the left, we have Milnerton Cricket Club, David Skiddo there on top. Dennis Smith, man, that uh, Eugene spoke about or spoke to. Keegan Fortune, Lucanio Meto, Matthew Coates, Tom Ellis Cole, Tristan Coates here at the bottom there, the wicket keeper. And on the other side, the team that played yesterday, unfortunately lost. Pierre Seister and Reeve Seister, the two brothers, two team bowlers, Tertian Robinama, Ambrose Fusak, the captain, Northern's Gurud, Vivian Engelbrecht, and Kim Nokia, Ashley Green, Jordan Bowers. And Eric Osner, Eugene. Yeah, no, those are the two liners. And for me, it's just a case of can Northern's good to get something out of this game. Their batters, their batters probably haven't done so. They haven't done the bids for them to get them in any position. They fielded quite well. They bowled quite well. But unfortunately, they just couldn't compete with the bat. And in the case of Milton Cricket Club, they had a few really, really tight games. They could have gone either way. And if it had to go for them in a positive way, they could have been up here playing for a place in the playoffs. But unfortunately, this is where they're at. And I'm sure they still want to go out with a bang. There we see the two umpires sponsored by ID247. On the left is a Shotgun Harrison. And on the right is Renji Pretorius. Here next to us is uh, in the commentary booth is uh, third umpire is uh, Mawande, the energizer. And now there we see the Yellow Brigade. The team, Northern's good at Cricket Club, yet to get a win. And uh, hopefully today can get, get one over Milnerton. So it's that yellow team up against the team in blue. Team in blue winning a toss and deciding to bat first. So team, two teams at the bottom of the log, Eugene. Yeah, they're the Sky Blues. And wouldn't they want to have been like the, the Sky Blues of the Prem? Man City flying high in all departments. But, and they are up against the yellow submarine of Northern's Goodwood Cricket Club. And it's going to be Vivian Engelbrecht to start off, off here. And there we see Lakano Metu, a.k.a. Paw Paw, so they say. Paw Paw. Look at his figures on the left hand side there. Four innings, 24 runs, and he would want to amass more. But now he's getting a chance to try and bat a little bit higher. And there is Dylan Smith. He is a dangerous man, and hopefully he can show what his team has been missing from this tournament. Only amassing 24 yeah. runs as well. And now we see the bowler, Vivian Engelrecht. Opening proceedings here for Northern's Goodwood. Bowling first. And uh, there we see his figures. Six games in now. Seventh game here. Just one wicket to show for it. So... Perhaps we'll be get, look for more wickets here in the final pool game. And uh, we'll be ready tomorrow with the playoffs. But first is this last pool game between Northern's Gooded and Milton Cricket Club. There we see our title sponsor, Golf Ticket, because they are part of this tournament. As we see Vivian Engelbrecht charging in from the town end. It's all very sedate there. Good length, good line, forward press into the covers. Dot ball to start us off here, Nathan. Yeah, poor, poor starting proceedings there. The batter there on strike, Lucanio Metu, a.k.a. Poor, poor. But again, I think poor, poor is the Mithalem Pongwane who plays for Western Province. So, a lot of look likes here. Oh, it's a bit of a mix up there. Oh, and also the fielder must feel that. That's the experience. Reeve Seist that just couldn't pick the ball up cleanly. And they off and running. And Lucano now off the mark. And now we have a big lad. Dylan Smith on strike. What makes a big lad a big lad, Nathan? You're looking at him next to you, Eugene. Because I would have said Meto is a big lad. Tall in stature for sure, Eugene. 
Oh, that is time to perfection, but it's the baby size to himself making the stop there at point. Yeah, good shot there from Dylan. First uh, delivery there for Dylan. And tail of the back foot, but uh, the young size there, we see young size to yet to bowl. Should you expect him later with the ball in, ball in the hand? That one's just dab to short. Third man, feeling been done there. I'll try and get the names for you. But it's very sedate. Even the noise level is not even noisy at all. Everybody's just coming here, just chilled vibes, just sitting. Even the organizers just sitting, chilling back on their seats. I mean, really now, can't get into this. This is not what T10 is all about, Nathan. They've got to get stuck in. Perhaps the person next to us, the energizer, is the key here. You're talking about our third umpire today. For sure. That's up in the air. Who's calling for it? Someone's calling for it. Someone has taken it. That is a steepler, and he has held on to it. He just shows, oh, I had to look in the sun there as well. But he hung on, and that is made too. He's got to go. Another back of a length delivery from Vivian Engelrecht. And uh, unfortunately, made too. Here we see that delivery again. Just a top edge. And unfortunately, finds a man standing and gets a square leg. First week goes down now for Moulton. Looks like he was doing some moves on the floor there before he tried to catch that one, Nathan. But he held on to it. He held on to it nicely. And in, the next man in is going to be the captain, Keegan Fortune. And I say it again, I've been very, very impressed with his captaincy through this tournament. And maybe something for Moulton Creek Club to look forward to as he's going to replace or he's going to join the man that has been captain, Dylan Smith. As there's his numbers. The four innings thus far and 11 runs to show for it. So all to do here for Moulton. Cricket Club. Captain, of course, of King and Fortune of Moulton Cricket Club. I must say he's a quite a knowledgeable uh, young lad. I mean, we had a quick chat with you so far the, throughout this whole combination, Eugene. Well, how, did you, how did you come to that? No comment, Eugene. <laughs> Off, yeah. Not today, lad. Today, I'm not sitting on no fence. I'm batting for myself today, lad. Well, Vivian, Vivian Engelbrecht, he's struck in the first over again. Two for one. Mullington Creek Club are here. That's down the left side. And shotgun Harrison shows wide before the ball even got to the... To the boundary then that's going to be five added to the score your poor delivery there from Vivian Engelbrecht there we set delivery very wide and going down the next side poor delivery and the keeper not even in sight to get that ball five runs and another delivery has to be bowled here from uh, Vivian Engelbrecht Larry the keeper there for Northern's good had absolutely no price he was sprawling there to the left Outside the off stump. Outside the off stump there. We'd like to see Keegan Fortune just bat. He, he, he can bat this youngster. Seen him play through the ranks. And he's shown that he can hit a ball as well. He's just not happy with shotgun Harrison's last. His decision of not giving that a wide as we look at that. The batting card there. I'm not sure who's going to be next. But that is it there. Looks like it's Matthew Coates. The big fast bowler that might be coming in. Vivian Engelbrecht, he's first over, going for just eight. As it's now that experienced man, Reef Seister, he's going to bowl from the golf course end here. First of the Seister brothers here bowling. At the golf course end. And Eugene is wearing his uh, green shorts. Of course, the Masters start today. There you see his figures. Three wickets. Fifth match here for Reef Seister. I think his brother's got more wickets than him. Yeah, I think he does. I think he has uh, seven or eight wickets. Well, he's got two overs to see if he can rectify that because this is for bragging rights in the Seister household. Let's be telling you that. His brother, I'm sure, only 22 years old, he's going to tell him, listen, i got more sticks than you, mate. Oh, 
that has sort of worked its way to mid on. I think I'm sure Dylan Smith wanted to hit that through the onside, through mid wicket more or less. Just end up getting more of an outside half of the bat. And it's the other Seister there standing at uh, mid on. Let's give it down to a single. Now it's that older brother. It's ball in hand. Keegan yet to get off the mark. The captain, of course, of Monaghan Creek Club. Yeah, it's just bad. It's just bad for a few balls. Get yourself in here. Oh. Yeah, it's out there. And I still don't see a slip. I would love to see a slip. Just do something that we haven't seen before. Ball does seem to nip. Look at this ball. Off the seam. Nipping away. Get yourself a slip in there, Reeves Seister. Eugene, you've been here almost every single day. Has there ever been a slip throughout this whole competition? Not in the early stages. Not when a seam is bowling with the new ball. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's twice now. Get a slip in. Surely you got to say, get a slip in there, mate. There's some swing away from the right-hander. I mean, we saw when the appearance was bowling the spinner. A few. There, that shape away from the right-hander. And unfortunately... For Northern School, did not ever get an edge there. Going a little bit fuller that time, trying to get the Yorker in. Look at him enjoying himself out there. The, the man himself, Reeve Seister. Still, come on, Nathan, do something. Get in the slip there. Go on. Yeah, beautiful C movement there from Reeve Seister. Up front, swing it both ways. Ready, Keegan Fortune, just facing four deliveries, and yet to get off strike. Oh, big swing there, big swing. That ball just died as it made its way to the Larry Dorman. The keeper there, another one of the stalwarts for Northern's good at Cricket Club. It's been around for forever. And another important thing is that those dot balls starting to add up. And uh, just one more delivery to conclude the second. Year for Reeves Sisters over. Ah, then a couple of changes have been made. And are, are we seeing it? Oh, no, we're not. You're just seeing third man moving a lot finer. That's all we're seeing. Oh, the charge was on. The charge was on. I think we need a medic out there. We need a medic. That was brutal. That was brutal, Eugene. And that's uh, the end of the second over. And uh, that is uh, one run in that over. Yeah, he's trying to get down the wicket there. Not sure what the check is all about. We just get on with things here. He came down the wicket. So it's got to be where his stance was at the crease. So again, people just not sure where the decision is. And look at that over there by Reece Seister. Only going for one. Vivian Engelbert, he's over going for just seven. And he's going to continue here. He's going to bowl his second over. And this will be the third over, which will conclude the power play period. That's the most important thing there, Eugene, was the, that column, wicket, wickets column. Even just getting that one wicket and first uh, over. Going full and straight again. Dot ball again. And let's not forget the men in yellow, the yellow submarine. The men from Northern's Good at Cricket Club. The men sponsored by Tars 777. Yet to win a match here in the golf ticket presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10. Firmly hit. Or is it firmly hit? Yeah! That's taken. Eric, Eric, the shuffler, Osner, he moved like a gazelle. Taking the catch, coming over his left hand or his right hand shoulder. And well done. And Vivian Engelbrecht, he strikes again. Another back of a length delivery there from Vivian Engelbrecht. And uh, paid across the line there to mid wicket. And there we see a lot of motion out there. Line. Unfortunately, not getting a full bed of the bat. No control whatsoever. And uh, there we see that great take 
Going on the right hand side, great take from the man, Sandy Midwicket. Second wicket down now for Milton. And that is unfortunate for Dylan Smith. He's a dangerous man, and when he gets going, he can hit the ball to all parts. Just managed to cloth that. As we see, Matthew Coates, he's now coming in to join Keegan Fortune. This is the start of the young brigade here for Milton Career Club. Only mass four runs in the one innings that he's had so far. Still four balls to go, and he's going to face up. And it definitely seems some definite movement in this pitch. Sometimes the ball is just sitting and sticking a little bit. There's definitely some movement as well off the seam. We've seen Reef size to beat the bat of Keegan Fortune quite a number of times. It's the wily old Vivian Engelbrecht sporting. Coming in from the town end here. Oh, he's off the mark straight away. Matthew Coates has used his feet just to get a little bit down the wicket. Just shimmy down the pitch. And getting through for an all-important single. There are two new, relatively new batters out there at the moment. So, as you can see, the run rate there at the moment. 3.6. So, those dot balls, wickets, don't really help. Gordon's good. At that ball just hit down and we've, we're only in the third over Nathan and we've had 11 dot balls now two more deliveries remaining to conclude the power play remember of the power play more fielders allowed outside the inner circle oh this time they were wily too at Ambrose the captain in like a shot there from cover Matthew Coase just keeping a bit forward there. But uh, just a dot ball to show for it. So these two at the moment, nothing to show for it. Dot balls, wickets don't help the cause here. That's hit. It's going to go straight to long on. Can you believe it? Straight to long on. Jordy Bars takes the catch. And that's another wicket. And another one bites the dust. Unfortunately, it's going from bad to worse here. End of power play. Ten runs. Three wickets down now for Milnerton. The ball that was in the slot. And um, again, unfortunately, not getting the full play of the bat on that one. And finds that man standing at long on. A bit forward there. And takes it number eight there. For Northern Scudder. Three wickets down. After three overs, ten for three. That is what it is now, and they've got it all to do. Ryan Mullen, he comes into the crease. It's not Justin toy. Unfortunately, it's day. Ryan Mullen. The Rancher Pretorius just uh, signaling the end of the power play after three overs. Remember, playing 10 overs. So, after three overs, power play ends. And uh, more fielders are allowed outside the inner circle. This is uh, for regulation of four inside. So, we could be expecting a field change here. There we see the scorecard. Keegan Fortune. Still out there, the captain of Moulton Cricket Club. And that new man, Ryan Mulder, on uh, the non-striker's end. Now we're outside the power play. And it uh, looks like it's uh, precise to two. Probably second over here. And to conclude his uh, spell. Yeah, and looks like they're going to put a slip in here. And so they should. They're well and truly on top there. They could actually move mid-wicket across and put him in the cover position because that's where the ball is seeming to. But they're leaving a big gap out, out there as well with a sweep on the offside. So what can size the dish up here? Oh, ball that's full. Ball that's full of length. Here's some C movement in the air and that one going straight into the right-hander. We've seen some shape going away and some shape going inside towards the right-hander. So, good points this far, so far, for uh, Reef Sester. Yeah, I just would like to see him bring that length back. But I still want to see mid-wicket go across to the offside. Right, 
field will dictate a lot about how you want to bowl. And I think if he gets that field across, he will bring his length back a little bit for that drive. It's run about there. Slack of bounce in this pitch now. Get your man across there, Reed. Surely get him across to the offside, man. That one just dying. It's in the surface and dying. Perhaps some inconsistent bounce out there. We've had so many games out here. That ball is clipped down to fine leg. Just striving for the ball. That, ma that magical ball that Seamus won. Pitching leg, hitting off. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen out there. I think uh, Moulton needs to be very productive out there. Doesn't really help having this dot ball singles. Eventually, they start to accumulate and uh, applying pressure back onto themselves. Down the leg side again. He's looking to strive for that. And Nathan, this is what I'm saying. The field will dictate how you bowl. Now he's seeing that big gap on this offside. Now he's going to take his slip out, which I feel that's not the right move. He should keep his slip in. He should just take his mid-wicket out because I don't think his mid-wicket is going to touch the ball at all if he's getting the ball out at it off stump with a little bit of nip away off the deck. Especially if it's a shorter delivery. Oh, that sounds a lot straighter and it's baby size to eat. Moves quickly across because it's, he's fielding for his brother there. He wants to keep it down to one. And that's what he did. Five runs and uh, ten deliveries thus far from Reef Seister. So just one extra from Reef Seister. Good bowling there, so Still got nothing in the wicket column. His, his brother's saying, can't you get wickets, mate? Just rolls past. There's a little bit of a slope there, and that because that's a sort of roll pass out to the right and or to the left as you see it there on your screens. As umpire Renshia Pretorius just indicates, there's one ball so to go. Came off both legs. It's the old double double chamois there. Came off both legs, mate. Oh, just a nice smile there from Reef Sister, telling him to feel better. You're really lucky there. That's pulled. Oh, fine leg. Oh, fine leg. Can you believe it? Yeah, again, Reef says the opponent to his field here. Yeah. He spoke about the wicket column. There he gets his wicket, finally. And that concludes the end of the second over here for Reef Sester. Well, he manages to get a wicket. He manages to get something in that wicket column for himself. It was He banged this a little bit shorter. But Rasuda just helped along his way by Ryan. But straight to that man and fine leg on bended knee. And that's another wicket gone. It's going to be Hayden Ferret, the youngster, coming in here. And surely these two need to bat for at least two or three overs. See if they can really take and put a score on that they can probably defend here because it's all the Yellow Submarine. Northern Scooter Cricket Club, sponsored by Taj 777. Today could be the day that Northern Scooter finally gets a win. But again, it's still early days. Yeah, but positive early. signs so far for Northern Scooter. Very early. Hey, Nathan, don't. Have, you, we sat here too many times. We were thinking that it's going to go one way or the other. Come on, Nathan. Be positive, man. We've seen this movie before, Eugene. We've seen this movie before. Here we see the younger sister definitely having more wickets than his brother. That Pierre Seister. There's seven wickets. I was correct. Seven matches now. Seven wickets to show for it. Let's see what he has to offer you today against Moulton. Big swing there by Keegan. I saw I saw baby Seister or Pierre Seister before he started going. He was taping up his ankle. I mean, really, 22 years old, he taped, he was taping every bit of that ankle. I mean, what's going on? I think that's for bowlers. See, especially seeing bowlers nowadays, you find that to start to strap the ankles at a young age, Eugene. Never, never happened to me when I was that age. Never ever. 
Head down the ground. Is this going to be one? I mean, we're strapping it. That's at that age. Come on now, Nate. What happens in the rugby? Do they strap them up that time as well? Depends on the, on the surface, Eugene. Depends on the surface. That's in, Aiden. Sometimes you find that uh, some players have poor ankles or poor mobility leads in the ankles. Just yeah. physio physiology purposes here. Yeah. I'll go giving, with that Giving one. people out there some lessons in physiology here. Yeah. I'll go with that one. I'll, 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 I'll give you that one. Short ball. That's going to be one for the over. I think that was the first uh, short delivery that was we've seen thus far today. Uh, Aiden, Aiden one. So, three more deliveries and we'll get to that uh, all-important golf ticket strategic timeout. Two minutes and we'll have uh, PM joining us. Just not sure about this. I mean, we just pause in the game. T10 cricket just needs to flow and flow and flow. We can't check every decision that's out there. We just need to keep going. The short form. That yeah, decision. Just a tip. You spoke about this, Eugene, uh, last week. That uh, if he does tend to crouch, doesn't really do much. So, fair delivery there. The thing with that, Nathan, is the camera is at stump height for those. So, it's not at the upright position where the batter might be standing. Sort of a leading edge. Now, one thing Hayden Verrett definitely has to do better is running between the wickets. Sometimes he just, I know he's still a youngster, but run that first one very hard. I've seen a lot of him at, at school level as well, but here, you've got to run the first one. Put the field under pressure. That one, you're looking to play across the line, but getting that thickish edge going towards uh, third, and now the captain... Four runs and 11 deliveries for Captain Keegan Fortune. Oh, he's going to have a shy. Oh, no, he's not going to have a shy, mate. Now says 12, 12 deliveries. Four runs to show for it. No, Keegan Fortune. Better than that, bad. Better than that. Yeah, it's just difficult. I mean, one ball away from that golf ticket. Strategic timeout period here. And we hope to get PM soon joining us. Just head on to the onside. It's just going to be one. And that's going to conclude five overs. We're halfway through the halfway stage here, Nathan. And it's that time of the day where it is. The golf ticket presents the golf ticket strategic timeout. And it's now time for teams just to recoup, regather themselves and get themselves focused and see where they can get to in terms of Mullet and Cricket Club. What can they get to? See our oh man there. Oh, you have, you're donning the Masters Green as well there, Nathan. Masters Green. To represent, I think it was the memorandum that we all have to wear green here. Something green, and we both wearing green. Black and green. Handing over now to PM Prasanta. Time has come, friends. Golf ticket strategic timeout. And our golf ticket is sponsored by our drink cart. मैदान में है और आप देख सकते हैं कि दोनों टीमों के खिलाड़ी अपने रिफ्रेशमेंट्स लेते हुए और अपनी रणनीतियां बनाते हुए गल्फ टिकट जो है ये है यूएई का सबसे ज्यादा भरोसेमंद ऑनलाइन राफल ड्रॉ गल्फ टिकट यूएई में फुली रेगुलेटेड ऑथराइज्ड एंड रजिस्टर्ड ऑनलाइन राफल ड्रॉ है आप अपनी किस्मत का खेल खेल सकते हैं गल्फ पे आप जाए golfticket.com पे रजिस्टर करें लॉग इन करें अकाउंट खोलें और पाइए मौका करोड़ों कमा के अपने सपनों को पूरा करने का गल्फ टिकट जिनका टैगलाइन है शेयरिंग मिलियन स्माइल्स इन्होंने ऐसे ही करोड़ों लोगों के चेहरे पर खुशियां लाई हैं उन्हें खुशियां बटोरी हैं और आप भी उनमें से एक हो सकते हैं तो देरी मत करिए दोस्तों अभी जाइए golfticket.com पे रजिस्टर करें और आजमाइए अपने लक को खेलें अपने किस्मत का खेल सिर्फ और सिर्फ गल्फ टिकट के साथ क्योंकि गल्फ टिकट ही है यूएई का सबसे ज्यादा भरोसेमंद रजिस्टर्ड ऑथराइज्ड एंड रेगुलेटेड ऑनलाइन राफल ड्रॉ थैंक्स इन साइट 
Always good to hear from the big man, the great man himself, PM Prasanta. There we have what's coming at the conclusion of this tournament. We're going to go straight into it. The golf ticket presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League, the Champions League. The four, C, the four top teams going to be vying for a spot and to call them the ultimate champion of champions. And uh, that will be held uh, next week at the conclusion of a final, a big final that's all was scheduled on Sunday. Now we have the introduction of Spinner. Looks like it's uh, Eric Osner, the veteran for Northern Scooted. And that's a reverse sweep played away. It's actually going to go so far in front of square. It's going to go to the sweep on the offside. Now, I found out something about Eric Osner today, that he's played for a number of teams, actually. If you look at his numbers there, only taking the two wickets. He's played for a number of clubs here in the Western Province. So he's a well, he's a seasoned veteran, as you said. Well traveled by the looks of it as well. Oh, that's clipped down to the leg side. Now, how's he's running? How's he's running? Again, he's trying to stop there. Said this youngster you did just say, Eugene, this youngster, bum running between the wicket there. Yeah, that's one of the things that I will say about him. He's a very talented cricketer. But sometimes... Getting a lot of it, eh? Sometimes I just think yeah. he's running, just lets him down a little bit. Ball there by Eric, the shuffler, Osner, just beating the outside edge. And Hayden Vera just getting that inside edge so far. Good bowling here from Eric. Playing very straight, Hayden. Oh, he's left the ball. Now, we can still get out of that, Eugene. We've seen a lot of things in T10 cricket here. We've seen the old leave. Now we've seen the old leave with wraps him on the pads. That's a first... Do you think you can still get out if it ball does impact uh, outside right off? Up. If you Pe don't offer a shot, Eugene. People walking in front of us. I mean, really now? Got to wait your turn, gentlemen. Oh, oh, he's gone for the big sweep. He's gone for the big sweep. And this time, umpire, umpire, Rensha, victorious, sticks her finger up. And that means that Hayden Ferret has got to go. Gone, leg before wicket. It was coming, Eugene. It was coming. Hayden Verrett didn't look uncomfortable out there. And uh, that's fifth wicket down now for Monaton. There we see that delivery again. Impact in line. And uh, there we see middle and leg there. And uh, good call there from Richard Pretorius. Ball oh, hasn't got long to go to hit the stumps, hit the back leg, unfortunately. And that is the end of Hayden, Hayden Verrett. He's gone. It's going to be David Skiro, the new man, to come to the crease. I think he's only had one innings here for Milnerton Creek Club, if my memory serves me correctly. We'll soon get his stats up, and we can certainly see how, how many times he's walked to the middle. It can't be that many. I think uh, Milnerton, I'm really missing the likes of uh, Josh Chippy Chippendale here, Eugene. And uh, as I said, he only had the one inning so far. This will be his second. Yeah, just a number of the players, just unavailable. Uh, this tournament is being played during the week, so availability becomes a real issue. But we have to say thank you to both these teams, Tiger Bay Creek Club, as well as Mullington Creek Club, for getting their players to take part in this. The golf ticket presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 competition. And uh, one more delivery to conclude the sixth. And we're yet to see a boundary that comes off the bat. We've seen with that one just going from a wide. So, Swamble delivery here. And still the captain out there on non, on non strikers end, and Davis get out. The face the final delivery in the sixth. Apologies if I got the teams wrong. It is Northern's Good Cricket Club and Milnerton Cricket Club. But thanks to all the teams taking part in this: Rondebosch Cricket Club, Durbanville, Victoria, Belleville. As we watch this ball, and David Skidder goes on the sweep first and foremost as well. Cryfontaine Cricket Club. Tigerberg Cricket Club. 
Milton Cricket Club and Northern Goodwood Cricket Club. All of those clubs getting their players and getting them available to take part in this tournament that has taken place during the week. It has to be said as well. And these players taking time out to come and represent their clubs in this. The golf ticket presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 competition. There we see four bowlers being used as far. The opening bowlers finishing the spell. And uh, there, Vivian Engelberg, three wickets, nine runs. Good figures there from that veteran, Vivian Engelbrecht. Now we see. Just we're waiting to see who's that new bowler. Still is that man, the young Seister, Pierre Seister. To bowl his second over here. Goes, starts with a slower ball. The ball has been hit straight as a die, but the fielding has been done. Excellent stuff there by Keenan as he made some ground there to his right. All the youngsters must be fielding on the straight boundaries. Yeah, full left delivery there from Pierce Sester. Played on the ground towards Long On. Just for a single. And now we have that man, Davis Kiddot, on strike. Yeah, to get off the mark. Pierce Sister. Seven wickets already in this competition. Taken. And baby size to get a wicket now, and he moves up to eight wickets. Larry taking a nice, comfortable catch. Yeah, faint edge there, and uh, now the wicket goes down. Now it's going for bad to worst here for Milnerton. There we see that delivery, head of the back foot. Unfortunately, he has to depart. That new batter there, Tevis Kirot. Yeah, unfortunately, there, closing up the bat and exposing his bat there. And unfortunately, he has to depart very cheaply. That's uh, six wickets down now for Monleton. And they have to try and bat out the overs here. They have to try and get to that over number 10 at least. Eugene, I think uh, Monleton are. In jeopardy of getting to that lowest score, yeah, I think lowest score. What is the lowest score so far, Eugene? Speaking under correction, but it could be in the 40s then. 40s? I think it was 48, if my memory serves me correctly. Again, good ball. Now, you know you're in a stage now where, as a bowler, you can just bowl normal fields. You can even... <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Get a slip in. You know, you can bowl hard lengths just coming in there and trying to hit those lengths. Yeah, there we see Tristan Kutsia. <laughs> Bowled him, middle stump, out the ground. It gone cartwheeling out. And look at the celebration there by Pierre Seister. As another one bites the dust. Sure uh, unfortunately, man, missing the ball there. Says it tells him, if you miss, I will hit there with middle stump. Pass, caught wheeling off the ground. That's seven now, seven wickets down there, middle stump. Man, oh man, that looks beautiful. Says the nine wickets now for you, long lad. Nine wickets. would like to see a side view of that stumping. Funneling out of the ground there because that stump went flying, cartwheeling out. And that's another wicked gone there. Yeah, the yellow submarine, they well and truly in command of this one in their final group game. 48 runs, Eugene. 48 runs. That scores under jeopardy. Lowest score as far in this competition. It's going to be that as well, yeah. They've got to do some project. The score says 33. Three runs and over. Three runs and over in T10 cricket. It's not what you expect, yeah. Eugene, what is the plan if you do end this game? Early? What is the plan? Playing golf? I'm playing some golf. Masters. Got the Masters today. I'm playing some 
I'm not in the mood. You don't even dare go there today, mate. It's the Masters. It's the Masters. Don't. <laughs> it is the Masters. Don't go there, Nathan. Still coming over. Oh, Eugene. The time has gone. The tea time has gone, mate. The tea of time has gone. 8.45, it's gone. You can still schedule. Let's start it's for you. It's gone, mate. You can still schedule. Let's start. Let's get... Pierre Seister, can we get him to double figures? He's got two balls to go. Can he get to wicket number 10? Um, It's well played there by Tom Alice Cole. Hit the middle of the bat. Now, just one delivery remaining to conclude the seventh. So far, just one run and two wickets to show for it. And there's Pierre Seister second over here. 21 for seven. Short ball, cloth to air to Cosner. Gone he goes. He gets 10 wickets. He moves to 10 wickets in this competition. Pierre Seister looking for his brother. Where are you? I've got 10, mate. How many have you got? That is three wickets in this over. And again, the batter not able to get full blade of bat on that one. No control whatsoever. And finds that man. There we see that delivery again. Short delivery from Seister. Pulled and headed towards mid wicket. Osner doesn't miss out. The veteran wearing number 14 shirt. Now we're three wickets in that over. And we will see seven overs down. 21 for eight. Yeah, that looks very tough. That is 21 runs only. They mustered up here. Seven, oh, but let's take nothing away from Piers. Saisa, look at that. Three wickets for four runs. He's done. Look at his brother. One wicket for five. The Saisa host, uh, household has bowled four overs collectively. Four overs collectively. And all they got, they've got a mass. Four wickets between them. Next batter's in jeopardy of, of, of a timeout here. But uh, I think uh, Pierce Saisa has got some bragging rights out there. Taking two more extra wickets than his brother, Eugene. He's got bragging rights to last a lifetime here because he's got more wickets than his brother in this whole tournament, let alone today. So he can go and sit at the head of the table, one feels, when they have dinner together. <laughs> New man, he's come in. I'm happy with that. He's going to face up here. It's going to be Eric, the shuffler, Osner. He's going to be bowling over number eight here. Over number eight. And can he add to the wickets for him? They appeal and they walks. Keegan Fortune walks. And uh, no need for that. Uh, this also to be given out there. Beautiful sportsmanship there from Keegan Fortune. Yeah, that it is. Yeah, and that's going to conclude the end of the innings as one of the batters are, have retired himself out. So that concludes this innings here for Mullerton Cricket Club. Unfortunately, they have massed only 21. So it's going to be more than Scooter Cricket Club that's going to get a chance to knock off that 22 runs as quickly as they possibly can. And uh, just another reminder, Mullerton win the toss and deciding to bat first. And uh, now we see the in jeopardy of having the lowest score in this competition. Not something that you want to have. But uh, so all to play for here. Northern Skudud dismissing his team. Just under 22 runs. So they need 22 runs for victory here in 10 overs. Exactly. 22.2 runs to for inside 10 overs. So Northern Skudud. Sponsored by Taj 777. Have an opportunity. To get a, finally get a win here out here. Today against uh, Mulnerton Cricket Club. There we see the bowling figures. Four bowlers just being used today. They're on top. Very, very angle bit. Starting pieces up front with three wickets. And the Reef says just one. And his younger brother, three wickets. 
now has 10 wickets in uh, this year's competition with that economy of two. No fours, no sixes to speak of in that Smolton Cricket Club innings. And now we'll just get to the highlights and uh, to the interviews in a bit. So we're going to have a chat with some of the experienced guys of both teams. So firstly, we're going to speak with Reeve Seister. So Reeve, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, what? how did you find this T10 competition for yourself? To be honest, I enjoyed the, the competition quite a lot. I don't think players at a club scene get to play white ball cricket a lot. I think there's a good competitive space where you can have the best of the best compete so you can actually gauge yourself where you stand as a player. It definitely tests the skills of, the, of both bat and ball, doesn't it? Oh, 100%. It also exposes you to new tactics that you need to think about, how to bowl, how to assess playing conditions a lot quicker. And the, generally, you can see the teams that do that, the fastest are the ones that are winning. For me, this, uh, this T10 competition breaks it down. Club cricket gets played over 50 over 50 over cricket here in Cape Town. But this 10 over just shows that the importance of it as well, that you can take into that 50 over game. 100%. If you look at, I think the best example was our game yesterday where Quentin Dreher has showed that if you spend time at the wicket, the fundamentals are still the same. Yeah. Take your time, assess, get in and then launch. It's just, it happens a lot quicker now. Yeah. And the finer aspect of the, really the, the smaller things, the wides, the nobles, the misfield, the drop catches, they sort of just get really made bigger in this sort of format. 100%. It, everything just gets amplified a lot more. But as I said, like the fundamentals of the game still remain true. If you do your basics well, you do it correct, you will end up on top. Still like to see, I'm not saying that you're old, but still like to see the old guard still going out there playing away. Oh, I, I would love to, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Time's getting getting closer and closer to me, but I, I can see at least that, you know, my brother's starting yeah. to get into his own side and this tournament has sort of put a light onto him, which is great. Looking forward to your off-season? 100%. <laughs> Listen, Reeve, go well. Thanks, man. That's Reeve Seister, one of the key men. I'm going to ask David Skiddon. He's another of the, the old guard. David, if you can come and join me. David is representing Mullenden Creek Club, but he actually plays his cricket out there in Primrose. And David, firstly, what I'm going to ask you is, how did you feel your season went just overall uh, before we get to this T10 competition? Um, uh, not, not the best of seasons for me with the ball. Um, but I suppose that's how cricket goes. You know, there's ups, there's downs. You know, I've had many good seasons before. Um, it's just one of those seasons where you know you just got to take a step back, have a look, and go again. I've seen a lot of you. Just talk to me a little bit about your thinking, your thought process, especially in T10 cricket, whether it's bowling with inside the power play or bowling outside that power play. Um, you know, I think it's as as Reeve said. Um, you just got to adapt and adjust quickly. Um, stick to those basics. Um, if you've got a field out, if you set your field. Try and stick to that plan, try and bolt to your field, and you look, if batters play good shots, so be it. It's good to see that you, for you, I'm not going to call you an old guard, I said to Reeve exactly the same. Good to see you still enjoying the game, and I'm sure you're still ambitious to, to still try and play cricket at a higher level. 
100%. Um, look, obviously, as we know, in Western Cape, it's quite hard because yeah. there is loads of talent. Um, but it's all, always good, you know, for oneself to be able to box with the big guns up top. So, yeah, always still trying, always still pushing. There's talent, but you can't, you can't argue again uh, black and white about what the performances you put on the paper. Well, 100%, but um, at the end of the day, these are what it is, you know. Just got to soldier on and march on. Listen, go well today, finish off your season well, uh, and then I'm sure you're looking forward to the off-season. Thanks, Eugene. That's a couple of insights from two of the senior men involved with this T10 competition, one representing Millington Career Club, sponsored by Lords Exchange. The other, uh, the other one is representing Northern's Good, sponsored by TAR 777. Looking forward to this game, and then we look forward to the playoffs come tomorrow. And we're about to get going here for the second innings here as we see the umpire sponsored by ID247 making their way to the middle. Umpire Shotgun Harrison on the left and Rensher Pretorius on the right. And all the, the only question that's there for us to ask is how long will it take to get 22 runs? Hello and welcome again to all the viewers and fans out there. There we see the Milton team. Milton win the toss and decide to bat first. And Northern's good at doing a very good job keeping the scores to under 21. 
pulling them all out inside the 10 overs. Now that yellow brigade which just required 22 runs yeah, yeah. in the 10 overs. There you see the new batter, Stevan van der Neve. Yet to get off the mark. First innings here for Northern Scooter. they Ashley Green as well. So I think that was the lowest total so far in this competition, Eugene. Yeah, unfortunately, it has been the lowest team total. And I'm sure now we're probably going to see some slips. We've got to see some attacking fields because the only way Mullet and Creek are going to win this game is if they bowl the yellow submarine out. And it's Tom Ellis Cole to start us off here from the golf course in. I agree, Eugene. Just an aggressive fielding. Positioning there for Mullet. Just to give him enough of a chance for... Potential catches and those runouts. So I think it will be crucial to get as many dot balls as possible and look for those early wickets up front, especially in that power play. There's three overs there. We see the figures of uh, Tom Ellis Cole and uh, yet to get a wicket. So Northern's good at yet to get a win in this year's competition. Monilton just had one win. So there's two bottom two teams on the log, seven and eight. Northern's good at have a chance here. We've got a problem here, man. We've got a problem. The game's going to be finished well before lunchtime. Predictions, G. Predictions. Talk to us. I'm predicting the game will be finished long before lunchtime. I'm telling you now. So it's the time now. The time now is just before 5 to 11. So you're saying it will be done before 12, 12 o'clock. Surely. I agree with that, Eugene. Nathan. Nathan. It's a dart ball first up. Nathan. Let's let's look through this. You're a Weinberg boy. It takes it takes an hour to finish no, ten overs. No, forty-five Eugene. minutes. It you gotta, takes an you hour see, to finish. You've got to stick to the rules. you got to stick to the <laughs> it rules. It takes an hour. Forty-five Eugene. minutes. Forty-five minutes constitutes an inning. It takes an hour, Eugene, to finish ten overs inside an hour. So surely minutes. it'll be done. That's, and they're up and running. Wide call there by Renshaw Pretorius. And I'm going to stick to this one, Nathan. You've, you've done a few games here with us. T10 cricket, first rule of thumb, you've got to bowl your overs in the set time, which is 45 minutes. And we're seeing two slips. And as I said, this is what they need. They're going to need to have as many slips as possible and get three slips in. I think, uh, Mul I think uh, Eugene, Moulton made Eugene's day there with two, two slips. They've got no choice, mate. They've got 21. They've got to get more slips in. Oh, boy, they're going to go for a run. Run out is on. And let me say that Runout is not on. I just hope that uh, Northern Scooters don't implode here. That uh, that run wasn't there on the offer there. Ah, big Nate. We've seen, we've seen things, Eugene. We've you seen, yo, you we've seen, seen some things, things. mate. You've got to say, seen. you seeing things. I'm not seeing now. <laughs> you seeing things here. Not sure what are you seeing. So far, just two runs in uh, three deliveries in the first. That's hit down the ground. Just heard from a man, a handyman, a man in chief that helps out with the cameras. The setup here, Steph, the man that had his 10 seconds of fame yesterday running onto the ground. He seems to think that this game will take 20 balls. He says 20 balls. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he can have his up his 10 seconds to 20 seconds. That's hit down to the offside. It's just going to be one. I think Steph, uh, so we spoke about the prediction before this game. So Steph says three overs, two deliveries. I say three overs, six deliveries, so four overs. And one of the, one of the staff members said uh, three, three overs and four deliveries. 
So somewhere between three and four overs, Eugene, to be done. You you like your in between? Just go for one. Just call it no, out. Mate. I said three. I said four overs. You said four. Basically three, okay. three overs, okay. six deliveries. That's clipped away. That's gonna be a boundary. That's gonna be a boundary. Lo and behold, I haven't. Ha we haven't had a maximum in this game. Well, that's the first boundary of the day, of the bat. This is We're seeing it, Eugene. This has been a very. I mean. Thanks to everybody. Thanks Did to Mullins and Cricket Club and Northern's good at Cricket Club for just saving my voice because we haven't had one maximum today. Can we have a game with no maximum? This one could be the first one, UG, for the for the competition. That's what I'm asking you. Are we going to do that? Don't sit on the fence now, mate. Do you think it's possible? It is. Anything is possible, UG, in a game of cricket. Here we see the new bowler, Keegan Fortune, bringing himself, bringing himself responsibility there. Is it Keegan Fortune? Looks like it's a hey, man, Hayden for it. Bowling, bowling second over. That first over, just going for seven. So now just requiring 15 runs for victory here. Northern's good at Yellow Brigade or the Yellow Army. Not quite sure if they can do this quite quickly and push themselves off that wooden spoon if the wind is at a, at a canter in terms of net run rate. But there we see Hayden Verret yet to take a wicket. I think we need to look at the casual calculator for this one, Eugene. Nah, not needed for today. We'll save it for tomorrow. There the Yellow Brigade sitting, enjoying the shade under some of the umbrellas that set up here because it's an absolute beautiful day here. I must say, just speaking on, on fans and dugouts, Victoria have been a classic yesterday. I'm not sure if you remember that smoke coming out of that uh, change room. Down. Yeah, it got quite tense there. I felt at some stage they weren't scoring enough runs and the guys were lighting cigarettes. They were trying to get to their vapes and all we saw when we looked to the right was just smoke all over the place. I mean, the nerves and the tension there. So, yeah, you are just speaking about the game between Victoria. Oh, it's a quick call. Oh, is he the stumps? Ah, he has no way! No way! No way! What is happening there? First wicket goes down. Must see that non striker who expected that. It was just a dun dun. Ryan Moe. Ryan Moe. Did I dick? Straight on. Flicks the bales. It flicked the bale. And out he is by an Unbelievable. Mile. Unbelievable. First wicket goes down now for Northern Scooter. And uh, the battle was looking back at the fielder. Why does he look forward and run straight for the crease? It's a good wicket, nevertheless, Eugene. Ryan Moe, can you believe it? From short third, man, throws, hits the bail at the non-striker's end. And that's Vivian Engelbrecht, he's coming in. And he's that uh, veteran, Vivian Engelbrecht, did his job there with the ball in hand. Getting, now he's moving on to four wickets already, three wickets in this game. So they have to update it, 80, 80 runs, ready. Please get some. Can we please get some work for some of these people to do instead of walking up and down past us? I mean, really now. I mean, we're trying to look at this game. It could get very interesting here, but they keep walking up past us here, left and right, trying to see what's going on. But we just need to see about that because Big Vivian Engelbrecht, and I feel he has had a really good tournament. This guy, 40 plus, as I've been told, but he's still producing here at this level. That's picked away. There we go. Four runs. Ashley hitting the second boundary. They're singling there from Shotgun Harrison, the umpire. Umpire sponsor for ID247. The short pitch delivery and uh, picked up nicely there by Vivian Engelbrecht towards the leg side. Ashley Green, and sir. That's the second one, second four year for uh, Northern's Gooded. Ashley Green, sir. Ashley Green. Ashley Green, I beg your pardon. There you go. You still happy with your four overs here? Are you still happy with your four overs, Nathan? 
Short ball. Whoa. But a, but a guess. Oh, look at the follow through. I like that. You see when youngsters run in and they bowl and it's a dot ball and it's a short ball and beats the bat or goes past the heads. The follow through is always right up there by the batter. But the minute they get hit, they pull up the brakes, make hand break. Boop. There's no follow through, man, as soon as they bowl the ball. Just, ex just ex explain again. What does it do? The follow through. See when it bowls does the it ball. Do the boop? <laughs> no, the boop is the... The boop is the handbrake, mate. The handbrake. Handbrake. Come on now. You've got to stick with the lingo, we mate. Need a, we definitely need a camera here. Yeah. You've got to stick with the lingo. Short ball. Oh, oh we're going to have it. Oh, we're oh, going to have it. You. There we go. Another short piss delivery there from Hayden Ferret. And uh, picked off nasty there from Ashley. And that's the first maximum of the day. And uh, now I'm moving closer to that uh, 22, that low score of 22. Northern's good at right on the way for victory. A first win here in this year's golf ticket, Cape Town Club Cricket League T10. Four overs, you said, mate. We won here away. We won here away. Another short ball. This is up in the air. Is it going to go all the way? You betcha. It's gone, gone. Gone, and with that, that concludes this game and this victory. Finally, victory for the Northern Scooter Cricket Club, the Yellow Machine, sponsored by Taj 777. They managed to get themselves on the board, and that concludes matters here. And this victory over the Sky Blues by the Yellow Submarine. Northern Scooter, as Eugene mentioned, Northern Scooter getting their first victory here in this year's competition. And was well inside the three overs. So, Northern's good. Now, sit on two points. Same with Milton. But, unfortunately, Wooden Spoon goes to Northern's good. Just another recap here. Milton winning the toss and deciding to bat first. And posting a total of 21. And, unfortunately, all dismissed, all out. And, uh, Northern's good. Making easy money there. Winning this game by nine wickets. And uh, now we move on to post-match presentation with uh, Eugene and the captains. Yeah, we've got to look forward to first, Nathan. First, let us congratulate both these teams for taking part in this golf ticket presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10. They came out. They've tried their best. Mullington Cricket Club had some really close matches that could have gone either way. No, but Northern's good at Cricket Club. They've had games as well. And if they batted better in those games, they could have been up there in the table as well. However, it's now our focus going to go to Friday, Saturday, Sunday for all those matches coming up. It's the playoffs. It's first the qualifier one between Durbanville Cricket Club versus Rondebosch Cricket Club. Then that is followed by the Eliminator, Victoria Cricket Club versus Belleville Cricket Club. And those are games that we all got to look forward to over the next three days. And it's going to be exciting stuff, Nathan, I'm sure, as I'm going to prepare for the final in interview mm. here with these two teams and then we can have a chat just about what's to come. And now we get to the highlights and then uh, on to the approach match presentation. Here we are at the post-match presentation of what was match 23 of this golf ticket presents. The Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 competition was a match between Northern's Guru Cricket Club, sponsored by Taos 777. They were up against the Sky Blues, Millington Cricket Club. They were sponsored by Lord's Exchange. It was Northern's Good Cricket Club that finally, finally get on that board with two points. 
and they can walk away with something to show for. But I'm going to call on Keegan Fortune, the captain of Mullington Creek Club, if you can come and have a word with us. Firstly, I'm going to say, just your little, I know it's been difficult to get players at these games during the week, but well done to you guys for getting your players together, and certainly they've enjoyed themselves, even with this defeat. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, uh, today didn't go according to plan. Obviously, no one uh, comes here to get bowled up mm. at 20, but the previous six games that we had before this, um, the boys really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed captaining these guys. Um, so, yeah, all in all, I would say it was a successful tournament, even though we didn't win as many games as we would like. It could have been so much different. You look at all those close games that you guys had, maybe just going over the edge a little bit, it could have changed it, and this game could have could have helped for that. Yeah, I look at the, especially the Ronde Bosch game, I think that was a massive yeah. uh, game in our season, or our tournament, where 33 of 30, and we ended up losing by six runs. I think if we win that, then all of a sudden you win one or two more, and then, you know, it, we're not in this position, but it is what it is. Still a lot to take forward to, especially for your youngsters going forward into the new season. Yeah, definitely. A lot of young guys... Um, put up their hands at different uh, moments. Uh, Lacanio Mertu bowled extremely well. Davy Skiro had shown his experience. Um, so yeah, lots of positives to take. A lot of players putting up their hands, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Hopefully they can take a little bit of this form come September when the season comes around. Any decision on your captaincy going forward? Um, <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> to be honest, um, I haven't had a chat yet, but if they do have a chat to me, I probably would be up for it. But we'll see what happens in the off-season. Listen, go well. Rest Cheers. well. Cheers. Thanks, Eugene. That is uh, Keegan Fortune, the captain of Mullins and Creek. I'm going to call on Ambrose, and I'm yet to have the, the conversation second with Ambrose. I've always been first up. So, Ambrose, you guys are on the board. You've got something to show for. Yes, yeah, we, the guys are very happy for this, so we, we'll take it. We'll take it. Listen, you guys bowled really well. As you said, you probably would have bowled, bowled at the start as well, that the conditions just suited your bowlers up front. Yes, our bowlers did amazingly. It's a little bit too late now, but I'm very proud of them. They did very, very well today. Yeah, and just a little bit of a cameo at the end there, just bringing more smiles to your faces. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm very surprised with Ashley. I didn't know he can bat, mm. so I'm very happy with that. Listen, again, this is your, your tournament over and done with, but I think there's still a lot for you guys to take forward to from this tournament. Yes, yeah, definitely. Look, um, a lot of guys like this format of the game, um, and it's helped them with their batting um, skills. So I think come season, we're going to have a lot of youngsters playing more bigger shots, a variety of shots, and actually looking to score way quicker than they normally do. Are we still going to see Larry no Dorman anywhere in the future? I don't think Larry's <laughs> going to play another season. We're trying to keep him there in yeah. the twos for experience-wise, um, but we'll have to speak closer to the season. Listen, well done. You guys on the boards, you got something to show for, for this tournament. Yes, thank you very much. And I just want to uh, thank our sponsors once again. Thank you very much. Those are the news of the captains here at this game. It was Northern's Guru uh, victorious here over Milton Career Club in this match 23. That concludes their league program. However, tomorrow we got some games to look forward to. First up will be the qualifier between Rondebosch Cricket Club versus Durbanville Cricket Club. And then we go straight into the eliminator between Victoria Cricket Club and Belleville Cricket Club. A lot of cricket to look forward to. Join us over the next three days for exciting stuff here in the Golf Ticket Presents, the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 competition.